Hello, everyone. Uh, so today we have a guest on the show, and I will be introducing her. Uh, this is my sister, Catherine, or Kate, as I call her. Um, so I'm switching the screen over. And so she is currently studying physical therapy up at the University of Florida. Um, and so she wanted to come on to the stream today and talk a little bit about what exactly physical therapy is. So I guess I'll give it away to you. All right. So yes, I'm in my second year of PT school. And a lot of times if I come home for the holidays or I'm just talking with friends outside of school, they'll ask me, you know, what exactly do you do as a physical therapist? And sometimes it makes me laugh when they um, try to guess exactly what a physical therapist does. I've got massage therapist, personal trainer, athletic trainer, and um, those are all very different things. Um, they kind of overlap a little bit, but physical therapists are different. And so I thought I'd come on and talk a little bit about exactly what a physical therapist is. Um, so we have a national organization called are called the American Physical Therapy Association. And they are in charge of advocating for our profession, organizing it, and they define exactly what is in the scope of physical therapy practice. Um, so they've come up with this definition that physical therapists specialize in optimizing movement. So you may think, okay, so physical therapists work with muscles, right? Movement, that's what makes you move. And um, I can tell you that it goes a long way past just muscles. Um, if you think about it, everything in your body is connected to muscles. And we have four main areas of practice in PT. So we work with musculoskeletal, which means your bones and your muscles. We work with neuromuscular, so the nerves that make your muscles um, fire and activate. We work with cardiopulmonary, so if you believe it or not, your heart and your lungs are both run by muscles. And we work with integumentary, which um, refers to skin, and that overlies your muscles and protects them. So um, I challenge you to come up with a disease or a condition that does not directly or indirectly involve muscles. Um, you'd be surprised just how many um, things are actually run by muscles. So if you can think of anything, I challenge you to put it in the comments below. I can tell you that it's going to be really hard. Um, so now I'd like to talk a little bit about all the places you can see PTs, because people picture PT as an outpatient clinic you come in, you sit on this table, you do some exercises, and then you leave. And it's actually a whole lot more than that. Um, PTs can work on professional sports teams. They can travel around with, you know, professional soccer, professional baseball, um, and work with that. They can also be in schools and work with children. They can be in nursing facilities, nursing homes. Um, they can be in rehab centers which are usually affiliated with some type of hospital um, where patients go after surgeries, um, spend a couple weeks there to get better. They work in hospitals on the acute floors. So right when you come out of surgery, we're right there. We're trying to get you moving right away. Um, they can work in home health, so they can come to your house and do physical therapy with you um, in your own home. And they can actually work with animals, which was something I didn't know about until I got into school which is kind of interesting. If you really like animals and you're into physical therapy, you can work with her animals, which is cool. Um, you can also be a traveling physical therapist. So if your thing is helping people, but you also want to travel the world, you can take certain jobs for months at a time. And some of those um, companies even pay for housing, which is pretty cool. Um, and then you can also go on to earn your PhD in something like rehab science, and you can work in research. And then lastly, um, if you want to work in the commercial field, you can work in engineering and you can create um, new exercise equipment, work in robotics, wheelchairs, assistive devices, prosthetics, anything like that. Um, so if you have any interest in health or exercise at all, um, physical therapy is the way to go. Um, There's so many ways that you can apply your degree and you can really get into anything. So, um, which is not something I knew when I started this career, I thought, you know, just exercise, but there's a lot more you can do. Um, so now I would like to talk a little bit about some weird things that PTs can do that you may not think of. Um, so one weird thing that we can do is we can help out with bowel and bladder control, which you may think, ew, but it's actually like a huge problem, especially with older adults. Um, 
they can have problems with either not going to the bathroom or going to the bathroom too much. And it's kind of a taboo topic. People don't like to talk about it or they're embarrassed, but um, if they come in and get treated, it can change their life and they can have a lot less problems and things to worry about. So if you think about it, what controls um, when you go to the bathroom or not? And it's actually muscles. Um, the bladder is one big, huge muscle called the detrusor, and it's controlled by littler muscles, which are called sphincters. And the same goes for your intestines. Um, they're surrounded by muscles, and they're controlled by sphincters as well. And so when those muscles get weak, you end up having these problems. And how do you train a weak muscle if you do exercises? So um, there's a specialty of physical therapy called pelvic floor specialist, and they can work with you, give you some exercises, strengthen those muscles and maybe make some of those problems go away, which can make a huge difference. And just to keep things interesting, I have some fun facts about bowel and bladder control in case you care to know. Um, so it's normal to have two to three bowel movements per day. Um, and the correct posture for that is actually a squatting position, hence the um, squatty potty uh, phase that we're going through right now. Um, you should urinate about four hours apart from each other. Um, if you're going more frequently than that, it's not, maybe you didn't actually need to go to the bathroom. Um, women, urination should last six to eight Mississippis, and for men, it should last 10 to 12. Um, try going to the bathroom without counting now after I told you that, it's pretty hard. <laughs> um, and so if you have someone that's having problems or issues with this topic, maybe you should suggest they go see a public floor physical therapist. Okay. So, um, um, I just wanted to mention we have a, a few comments in the, the comments section, um, but I, some of them are questions we can leave until after the suggestion. But I just we have uh, James and Haley are here watching, and uh, Haley was saying that she's a pre physical therapy uh, studying right now, so she says this is perfect for her. Oh, awesome! But I'll let you continue. Okay. <laughs> Um, so something else really cool that physical therapists do that I had no idea about till I entered school is um, they actually work in wound care. Um, now in present day, they're kind of moving this responsibility more towards the nurses, but traditionally um, physical therapists could work with caring for wounds and selecting the right types of dressings and keeping them from being infected. Um, sometimes when you have surgery, the wound doesn't heal up quite the way you want it to it can get really infected, it can come back open, it can form tunnels. And if you ever want to see some really um, gnarly pictures, you can look that up online. Um, but the people that do this have like a really strong stomach. I shadowed a wound care physical therapist and I actually saw a wound that went halfway through someone's knee, which was pretty cool. And I saw a heart surgery patient whose wound had opened back up in the middle of his chest and they had to pack it with like this black sponge material because you could actually see his organs. And um, they put a wound back in to drain all the blood and pus and they had to um, drain that every once in a while. Which uh, there's some pretty interesting odors and smells that go along with that. But if you're really into that type of thing, I would suggest wound physical therapy as a career. And if you ever want to see something interesting as a bystander or a shadowing, you can definitely check that out. Um, something that's a huge problem in hospitals especially is pressure sores and you might think oh like your skin just gets red you've been laying on it for a while but it can actually become more of like a tunneling sore and um, it can get really infected and really nasty really fast so something that physical therapists along with the nursing staff are responsible for is making sure that patients are repositioned every two hours to avoid these sores from developing and if you've ever um, laid in a bed or sat in a chair for more than 20 minutes, you know, like you have to shift yourself to get comfortable again. Well, with patients who aren't um, strong enough or in too much pain to reposition themselves, it can become a really big problem. So that's something that we're also responsible for that you may not have known. That's pretty um, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Um, something else that physical therapists can do is um, work with TMJ patients. So that's temporomandibular joint or your jaw joint. Um, and a lot of people have issues with it becoming um, displaced or popping or clicking. It can be painful. 
And I know that before physical therapy school, if I had jaw issues, I probably would have gone to a physician or a dentist. And I would have never thought to go to a physical therapist. But if you think about it, what opens and closes your jaw is muscles. It's just a joint, just like your knee or your hip. So you can do exercises to um, make it less painful, make it work better. I know there's some measurements that physical therapists can take to check the alignment of your jaw, make sure it's in the center. So there's a lot of things we can look at um, that your physician may refer you to us for. Um, so another thing that we are involved in that's pretty interesting is respiratory therapy. Um, there are actually respiratory therapists that are another specialty that are not physical therapists that work in hospitals, um, but we are also trained in that type of therapy. Um, so when your lungs are trying to breathe, there's a muscle underneath it that forms a dome. It's called a diaphragm. And when it comes down and flattens, it brings the lungs with it and draws air in so that you breathe. And then when you breathe out, it comes back up. And an interesting fact about that muscle is that when you don't use it, it deteriorates eight times faster than a muscle would in your arm or your leg. And so if you go into the hospital because of trauma or you're having some type of lung dysfunction, um, you may be put on a mechanical ventilator and basically that takes the place of that muscle. So you're not using it for um, days to, you know, however long you need to be on the machine. And so when you get off it, that muscle doesn't work and you can't breathe. And that can be a huge problem because if you can't breathe, you can't exercise and you can't get better from whatever you came into the hospital for in the first place. And it becomes this downward spiral. So it's very important to make sure that we work out that muscle. We make sure it doesn't get too weak. And so physical therapists, um, they can systematically wean you off the ventilator by giving you intervals of being on and off. They are trained in a um, clearing mucus for, by tapping on your chest and your back, which I never even knew was a thing, but it's actually pretty interesting. And they can also assist in coughing um, by teaching you how to either do it yourself or them applying it to you by pushing on the chest and applying extra pressure. And this is really important for people who can't cough on their own because they're too weak. Um, sometimes in spinal cord injury patients, when their muscles, their level of injury is high up, they, their muscles down here shut off and they're not able to cough on their own. So that's something interesting that we can also do. And then lastly, I just wanted to talk about um, how vast the different ways of applying physical therapy are. You may think like you're gonna come in, um, you're gonna sit on this table, you're gonna be given a stretchy yellow band and you're gonna do some really like lightweight exercises, maybe given a two pound weight and I know as an athlete or a young individual that I'm like, I'm beyond that. I don't need to be doing that. You know, this is too low level for me. Um, and I know a lot of patients are like that. They just want to get up off the operating table and go and do what they used to be doing. And that is something that you do have to start out with initially to make sure you're healing correctly and that you're working your way up safely. But there's a lot of other things that can be done in physical therapy. Um, one of the different things that you can do is aqua therapy. So if you're someone who's having joint pain in your knee, your hip, or you're having back pain, and just the effects of gravity over land are too much for you, you can get in a pool. And the water actually, um, the buoyancy of the water takes some weight off your joints, and it can relieve your pain so that you can do the exercise progressions that we give you um, with less pain and then you can work your way back onto land and I mean who wouldn't want to be in a pool anyways That sounds like a lot of fun to me And so also the water provides a little bit of resistance um, Just like a small weight would so you're working out when you don't even know it and then also if you are an athlete and you think that you're gonna need some higher level training we have sports specialized physical therapists and they will work you really hard. Um, after you're back to a safe point where you can be back on your feet, they will work in um, sports specific movements. They'll have you doing ladder drills. You can even do like benching and squatting, some higher level activities. Um, they'll work your you know, basketball, football, soccer ball back into the exercises. You'll be balancing on one foot. They'll be throwing things at you. 
Um, so they'll definitely get you back to where you need to be and make sure you can do all the movements you want to do before you get back to your sport, even at like the collegiate or professional level. And then um, something else interesting, a different type of therapy that you may not think that we can do is um, manual therapy. And in manual therapy, there are things called mobilizations. So if you've ever gotten to the um, chiropractor, gotten your back realigned, we can do something very similar. We can't call it chiropractic because that's their turf and we don't want to step on it, but we call it mobilizations. And we can uh, readjust your spine, neck, hip, basically any joint you can think of in your body. And a fun fact about that is that the pop that you hear when you crack your back doesn't actually mean anything. We can do these mobilizations to you, and if the pop doesn't happen, it's just as effective as if the pop did happen. The pop is just kind of like a psychological reassurance or a placebo effect that people like to hear. So that was kind of a whirlwind tour of physical therapy and um, just kind of showed you just a taste of all the things that we can do. Um, the profession is expanding rapidly and we have the APTA that I talked about earlier, the organization that's constantly fighting for us to be able to perform more services for patients. Something they're working on right now is called dry kneeling and it's very similar to acupuncture. So we're working on having the right to perform that in all the states. And also we're working on something called direct access. So I don't know if you knew this, but in the state of Florida, you can actually go to a physical therapist for 30 days without getting a referral from a physician. So if you have aches and pains, you know you hurt yourself, and you think, well, I could probably work on stretching it and doing some exercises. I don't really need to go see a, phys or a physician. I can probably just go see a physical therapist. You can do that for 30 days. And then if you still need physical therapy after that, then you'll have to go back and get a referral. But it can save you some time and some money if skipping that physician, or physician appointment where they're just like, oh, you need to go see a physical therapist. So um, we're trying to advertise that. Be like, come try us first before you go to the physician. Um, and so thanks for listening about physical therapy. I hope my talk kind of cleared up some things that you may not have known. Um, and if you liked my talk, perhaps you can comment below with some other health topics or physical therapy related topics you might want to hear. And maybe Jono will invite me back to talk about some more. Definitely. Yeah. So um, she's actually going to be coming over to my place in the I think in a month or a month and a half or so. At the end of March, yeah. Um, so it, if we have any more specific topics that you want to hear about, then we can definitely uh, try and organize that. But we do have a couple questions in the chat that I wanted to bring up just for you to answer. And if you have any more while we're discussing these, feel free to leave those. Um, this is just going to be kind of an open discussion at this point. And then later we'll move on to uh, another section. But um, the first question I saw is uh, from Haley, and she was asking, um, how did you get your shadowing hours? Okay, so um, I got a little over 100 shadowing hours, and I will say that it is kind of difficult to work your way into clinics because there are a lot of students out there looking for shadowing hours. Um, basically, you either have to have a connection or just call around. Um, some physical therapists are very open to helping students, and they'll be like, oh, yeah, you know, just like I'll talk to my supervisor and you can come on over. Um, and then some places you may have to have it in like a friend or someone's parent that's like, oh, I can get you in there. Um, and just on a side note, um, physical therapy schools like to see a variety of settings. So you want to get outpatient, you want to get some hours in hospitals, which can be tricky to do because of liability reasons. Um, you know, rehab, you can go to a senior nursing facility, um, just any range of settings. They want to see that you've seen it all and that you're still interested. And would you say there's a benefit to uh, to location as well? Because I know you were looking at some places that were pretty far away. Um, was it was it Italy you were talking about? Oh yeah. Um, so once you're in school, you have to do rotations, and you'll have a little bit around a year's worth of lo or rotation time. Um, in my program, we have four eight-week rotations, and you can do those anywhere that your school has an affiliation with. 
And if they don't have an affiliation, you can work on making that affiliation happen. So for instance, I didn't get it, but I was working on um, with a company that sends students to Italy. So I would have been able to go over for eight weeks and practice in Italy, which would have been awesome. But I have a lot of other rotations that I'm going to go to, which will be just as awesome here in the States. Definitely. Um, so we had another question from James. Uh, he was saying that he had reconstructive surgery on both of his shoulders and a knee, and uh, he had to go through a lot of physical therapy for those. Um, he was just wondering how much of a say does the physical therapist have in the treatment? Um, that depends on what type of facility you go to. So um, if you go to a facility that's directly attached to your physician's office, um, the therapist will have less freedom in what type of protocols they can follow for treatment. But if you go to an outstanding clinic, they do have a lot of freedom on um, what treatments they choose to do. There are restrictions for certain ther um, surgeries that they have to still stick to um, in terms of range of motion and like what types of strengthening exercises you can do over time. Just, that's just to make sure the tissue um, heals correctly. But after that, the like types of exercises, um, we try to make it very patient-centered. So if you're a basketball player, we try to do exercises that relate to basketball. Or if you like to walk, we try to make sure that you can walk. If you want to you know, go to the beach, we'll test your you know, ankle. You just sprained over some um, uneven surfaces to make sure you can walk on sand. It's just, it depends on the patient. We try to make it very patient-centered. Um, and then one thing I, I thought I remembered that there was sort of uh, two different levels of, of the term physical therapist in a sense because of uh, how, how much schooling you've gone through. Is that true? Um, it used to be a master's degree, which was two years. And recently it's gone up to a doctor or a doctorate of physical therapy. So it's three years now and you get a DPT afterwards. And then um, there is a PTA which is a bachelor's degree, I believe, or okay. a certificate. Yeah, so would that, that be more so, of like a, a nursing position as opposed to a doctor in as an analogy, or is that? Um, um, not quite. Um, physical therapy assistants, they work in the same settings as physical therapists. The only thing that they cannot do is um, do an evaluation of a new patient. And then once the patient is evaluated and the physical therapist deems them um, you know, sometimes the more complicated cases, the physical therapist will keep on their patient load. But if they think this patient's been coming for a while, they've been running through the exercise routine, I think a PTA can take it. Um, they're just technically under the supervision of the physical therapist. But I know a lot of really good PTAs um, that are very good at exercises. So they, they can do their thing. Okay. Well, I'm not seeing any more questions in the chat, so uh, I think we're going to move on to other sections, but I think this was a pretty good um, conversation. I hope you liked the visual that has gone along with it. Yes, it's beautiful. <laughs>